going on, Jerome? Your Minnesota Fighting Viking season is unfortunately over, but we are entering what could be one of the more transformative off seasons in franchise history. So uh, buckle up and um, uh, again, thank you very much for uh, coming along uh, this season. And we don't take your uh, attention for granted because we know there's a lot of options out there and uh, time is a limited resource. So thank you very much for spending a couple minutes with us and uh, it's the first. Ooh, it's the first Vikings Monday news dump of the of the new year. No, we did one last week. Never mind. Second Monday Vikings news dump of the new year. He sees you when you're pooping. So, uh, diving on in. Now, I may be a bad fan. No, so, first off, we need to have like a, a moment of togetherness and amnesty here because I, I know that the the tanking debate got a little out of hand and. I don't know. I feel like maybe it's a little bit harsh uh, on the tankers because I think ultimately they want the same thing that we do. I mean, the Vikings winning the Super Bowl. They just have a roundabout way of getting there. It's like, hey, if you lose, you can have a higher pick and maybe the player is better and maybe he's blah, blah, blah. But it's not a direct correlation, right? So, And we're of the school of you pick where you pick and how about you just make a good selection and uh, go from there. Like, Look at the Ravens, look at the Niners, right? When the Niners had high picks, they suck at it. But um, that, that's our stance. But being a fan is like a bell curve. I mean, a lot of people are in the middle. There's some yahoos. There's some dum-dums. There's some smart people. There's some not-so-smart people. Uh, that, that whole thing. But we're all on the spectrum uh, of fandom, and we're all fans, so we'll go from there. So, amnesty. Mm. Uh, but maybe I'm a bad fan. I, I don't know, but... I kind of like that through the various tiebreakers, the Vikings didn't end up in fourth place. <laughs> and, and again, I, I understand that, hey, if the Bears would have beat the Packers, the Packers would have been knocked out of the playoffs, which would have been great. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but and, and then also the Vikings would have moved up a, a notch in the draft order, uh, and then they would have been drafting 10th instead of 11th, although this is inaccurate because uh, of the you know, whatever. But, uh, I, again, I, I understand that the Vikings would have played a fourth-place schedule versus a third-place schedule, but I, I couldn't take it. I couldn't handle all offseason if uh, crooked Chicago Bears fans were like, oh, who finished in the bottom of the division? Same thing with Packers and Lions fans. Get out of here. Get out of here. So even though the Vikings had everything stacked against them this year, whether it be injuries, whether it be turnovers, whether it be everything, man. I mean, hell, it might be a miracle the Vikings won seven games. Who knew, man? But uh, after the game against Lions, so... I understand it's very easy to pick on Nick Mullins. He's a backup quarterback. He's a career backup, and you know he's a bit of a turnover machine because he's a gunslinger out there. But you know, he he was hot uh, on the sleeve in the post game conference. This is from Vikings fan page. Uh, Nick Mullins visibly emotional today after go, uh, going winless in his uh, going winless in his winless in, in his three starts for the Vikings. Oh, he did, didn't he? Uh, you do what you do. Uh, you want to do your best. It just sucks. And he talks about how you know great the locker room is, how great this team is, and how he – don't get me wrong. He, he put his best foot forward, but, yeah, at the end of the day, the Vikings just didn't get, get it done uh, in the three games that he started, uh, which were uh, Cincinnati, uh, the first Detroit, and also the second Detroit. And then you know, he got some garbage time uh, in against the Packers. Although, I mean, he did lead the game winning drive, which is a field goal uh, against the Raiders. So I'll uh, give him some credit there. And you know, Mullins, uh, I actually think that Mullins will be back next off season, uh, or next season. I, I think it'll be, I think they'll resign Kirk. I think that's a given at this point, but that's an argument for another day. Uh, I think Mullins will be, you know, that veteran backup. Uh, I think Jared Hall will be there cause he's on his rookie deal. And then also rookie TBD. I, I, I don't think passion back. I just really don't. Where, uh, you know, all, all the reports saying like, "Oh, the Vikings were interested in trading up for Anthony Richardson." I get it, but to a degree, I, I feel like if they would have been all in on a mobile quarterback, Kevin O'Connell in the back of his mind would have had an offense sketched out already. And the fact that he introduced very little of a mobile a mobile quarterback offense with Dobbs ma makes me sort of second guess things again. In midseason, it's hard to uh, implement a brand-new offense. I get it, but, I mean, a, a couple of plays like, ooh, here's a play where Dobbs is the running back and Hawkinson will pitch it to him, or, ooh, here's one read option. That's it. Yeah, here. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Mullins tried his best. You know, I mean, players are humans too, man. Uh, also, ooh, God, I feel so bad for the, that Colts running back. 
you know, the the third string running back where he was wide open, he had both mitts on the ball, should have caught it, and like Steichen and get, getting heat is like, why are you taking Jonathan Taylor Thomas off the field? How about that dude catches the ball? I don't know, man. It's rough. It's rough, man. But uh, something's also rough is what the hell is going to happen with the Vikings quarterback position. Uh, asked after the game, this is what Justin Jefferson said, quote, it's not really my question to answer. It's up to management, to the guys up in the front office. I'm always going to continue to be myself and play the way I play, whatever it is, and whoever it is, I'm going to ball out. Such a baller answer. Now, uh, JJ did say earlier in the week that uh, if Kirk was back, perfect. Uh, I think that's where he would be leaning. And also, uh, I, I think that he's being a little bit too humble here, like 100%. Like, he will have some uh, sort of an input on who the future franchise quarterback is going to be, as well as if Kirk Cousins is back. And I, I think that JJ is an advocate for Kirk. And also, you know, people saying that Kirk, you know, Kirk's going to get all these free agent money. Uh, oh, his wife is from Atlanta. They'll go all in. I don't think that any team in the right mind would offer Kirk Cousins, who is going to be 36 and coming off an Achilles tear. I don't think that any team in the right mind would offer him, you know, over 40 million a year or th over more than three or four years. I, I I just really don't see that. So I think that that could help the Vikings economically. And also I think Kirk will realize that the, the Vikings are set up for success now and it, it will be his best chance to win a ring versus going to a new team, learning a brand new offense, starting over and having lesser weapons and lesser tackles. I, I think that's where his thinking is going to be, but I guess we'll find out. Uh, speaking of those weapons, Jordan freaking Addison. Uh, so overshadowed by Puka Nakua, sure. Uh, yeah, maybe Rasheed Rice a little bit, but uh, Addison certainly had himself a phenomenal rookie season. Uh, 70 catches, around 900 yards, and change receiving. Also, uh, Will Ragged Sports Illustrated, go. Jordan Addison is the is just the 11th player in the Super Bowl era with at least 10 receiving touchdowns as a rookie. Three of them are Vikings, Addison, Mouse, as well as Sammy White back in 1976. Um, so, also, I mean, so the, the 75 Vikings, which I believe that was the team that got Hail married, but really the Drew Pearson push off. I, a lot, a lot of old school Vikings fans say that that seventy five team was the best team of all time for the Vikings. Uh, great defense, great offense, and it, even the teams that didn't uh, win the Super Bowl, but they went to the Super Bowl. But that seventy five team, and also, you know, I'm not advocating violence, but you know, the ref who got hit in the head with a whiskey bottle, you know, you know, I don't know. But uh, it, it was a great uh, freshman season for uh, Jordan Addison. And, you know, just imagine what he's going to be when you have your QB1 out there the entire time, whether it's Kirk or rookie TBD. Ooh, hey, Vikings trade up, get Caleb Williams. Yeah, right, go ahead. Reunited, and it feels so good. But Addison <clears throat> set three phenomenal seasons. Like, he made Kenny Pickett at Pitt, won the Blitnikoff. He made Caleb Williams at USC, uh, and now is putting up numbers. And imagine what he'll be. Full season with QB1 and a full season with Justin Jefferson opposite him. It's going to be great, man. man. Also great is, speaking of Justin Jefferson, so JJ uh, got over 1K uh, yesterday. And, I mean, yeah, but taking silver linings out of a sort of a poopy year and the fact that Jefferson got 1,000 yards in just over 10 and a half games, pretty damn impressive. Uh, Kevin Seifert, ESPN, who's not Carl Gerbschmidt. Who's not? Uh, JJ is the fifth player in NFL history to have four consecutive thousand-yard seasons to start a career. Also, Michael Thomas, that slants. AJ Green, that all right, uh, as well as Mike Evans. Uh, you know, Mike Evans obviously has had ten in a row. It's pretty damn good. Uh, and as well as Randy Moss, perhaps you've heard of him. So uh, JJ um, keeping the streak alive. And also, uh, imagine how Justin Jefferson is going to operate next year, where the motivated slights. First time he hasn't been a pro bowler. First time he hasn't been on one of the all pro teams. And everyone and their mom talking about all these other receivers. He's going to come in fired up, man. Mm. Also fired up is uh, the Vikings opponents for 2022, uh, excuse me, 2024. God. Doesn't feel like 2019 was like two years ago, but it's five. Hmm. Uh, anyways, uh, 2024, the opponents. So the Vikings, you know, obviously play their division games. And in terms of the division rotation, the Vikings are playing the NFC West as well as the AFC South. Uh, and then the 
third place slot uh the vikings will play the falcons and the giants uh, the two uh two teams from the divisions that vikings are, don't play in the in the rotation and then the extra game uh from the opposite conference will be the jets just just jets so uh, a-, a ron rogers uh brings his ass back into u.s bank stadium if he's not hurt by then uh and then the vikings vikings got some unique road games so you know, they got the three in division uh but you're at la i love la so Kevin O'Connell taking on Sean McVay, unless he retires again. Who knows? Uh, up in Seattle, Vikings always play in Seattle, man. What the hell? What the hell, man? Tennessee Titans. Uh, Nashville is a very fun city. Jacksonville Duval. I love it. Uh, and then in New Jersey, against the Giants. Revenge game. So there you go. Uh, the Vikings also have nine home games, which is part of the rotation. Um, so uh, nine home games, a third-place schedule, Super Bowl homeboy. 17 and 0. That's all I see. Like looking for the Vikings first loss. Can't see it anywhere. Nah. Uh even with my Asian 2020 vision. Although my vision sucks. Like my I think my contacts are minus 425. That's bad. It's not good, man. Uh, if I had glasses, that'd be Coke bottles. Should do have glasses. I should wear glasses more. Anyways, uh one of the bright spots of this season has been UDFA linebacker Ivan Pace Jr., the pride of Cincinnati, also the pride of Miami, Ohio, getting things done. Uh so uh, Vikes fan page put out Ivan Pace Jr.'s rookie season, 102 total tackles, nine quarterback hits, two and a half sacks, and also a bunch of other great stats. It was fantastic this year. Uh and Ivan Pace Jr. quote tweeted, Do not repeat, do not pull the undrafted card. I deserve defensive rookie of the year. Yes. I I think that he certainly does consider uh, does uh, merit consideration. I-, I think that he should get it. And also, it's going to be great him next year. I mean, who knows if Hicks is going to be back, but Pace is going to be that linebacker one. Might be a second-year team captain. It's possible. Also, he's going to don the number zero because Davenport long gone. Bye-bye. Uh, and uh, give Pace Jr. number zero. Let's go. Let's go, man. Mm. Uh, Some of that did not go. So, Madison... And again, for the record, I love Alexander Madison. I think that he's a good dude in the community. I think that he's a solid all-around running back. Maybe he was best served as you know the backup to uh, Dalvin Cook for a number of years, but Dalvin was like, go. Madison signed his two-year deal, and he was installed as RB1. And just the Vikings running game was just very, very poop at this year. But Will Raggett, Sports Illustrated. Here's another stat. Alexander Madison is the 13th player in the Super Bowl era and just the second since 2003 to have 180 rushing attempts in a season without a single rushing touchdown, which is frustrating. It is. Now, it's not like the Vikings didn't have rushing attempts inside the five. I mean, they did. Akers had a couple rushing touchdowns. Same thing with uh, Ty Chandler. But, I mean, the fact that Madison didn't bust one or didn't punch one in from uh, from inside the five. It's just, I don't know, it's just, it was a tough season. And it's not all on Madison. It isn't. I mean, part of it's on blocking uh, up front, even though they were graded highly by the analytics. The Vikings offensive line did have run blocking issues. Uh, and you do have to look at play design, play calls, um, run game coordinator Curtis Motkins, run, run backs coach as well. I mean, there's a lot of blame going around. But also, I mean, Madison isn't. Can't excuse it. I mean, just simply did not get it done on the field, and that's what's frustrating. Uh, also frustrating is watching from home, but I, wild card weekend is going to be pretty damn great. So uh, you got your one seeds, you got the Niners, you got the Ravens, all, all that stuff. And then uh, for the NFC, you got the seven seed Greasy Grime Green Bay Packers, allegedly uh, going on the road uh, against the Cowboys uh, in the McCarthy Bowl, uh, which is fantastic. A- actually, let's. Let's do the TV matchups. There we go. Uh, so Saturday, since so it's Saturday, uh, you got the Browns at the Texans. That's great. I, I, I love that Houston won the division. <laughs> also, Jacksonville. <laughs> and also, hey, shouldn't the Texans have lost their last game last year so they, get, they got the number one overall pick? Sometimes it works out. And, uh, again, I'll, I'll say this to everyone who worries about draft position. Do not estimate other teams' ability to to F things up. People will make mistakes in the draft and other teams will capitalize. I think the Ravens are so good every year uh, when they're constantly drafting in like the late 20s. Uh, So you got the Browns. I I love that the Browns and Jumpin' Joe Flacco and our guy Stefanski, I'm glad that they made the playoffs. It's going to be awesome. And then on Peacock, a lot of people are mad that this is on Peacock, but this is literally what you wanted. Like people uh, pissed and moaned about the price of cable. Everything split off. And now we're, we're paying a la carte. 
on 17 different apps, just get the seven-day free trial and then cancel. Right. Uh, but the Dolphins, I mean, for a supposedly good team, the Dolphins are kind of ass. Thank you. But also the Chiefs, the Chiefs aren't good. And I don't think there's any help on the horizon. It's a collection of a couple of superstars. Uh, the age, well, the aging Travis Kelsey, Chris Jones is still a, a, a damn dude. Uh, and it's Mahomes and Rasheed Rice. Not a lot of other receiver help. So uh, I, I think that the, I think the Chiefs could get got. Who knows? But either way, the Dolphins, they got to step things up. Uh, but of course, the, they, they love the narratives, the Tyreek Hill Bowl. Of course, I groove this matchup. Uh, then you got the Steelers and the the Buffalo Bills. Won't you come out tonight? Uh, actually, which matchup is this? All right, so yeah, Steelers seven, Bills two. It's funny because the Bills could have been the five or as low as the six, maybe, or the two. Yeah, either way, it worked out. Uh, so the, the Steelers going up to Orchard Park, where I mean, the Bills stumbled out of the gates. They got things together. They have a ton of injuries. Weird how they overcame them. Hmm. Uh, but Josh Allen, you don't really know who's going to show up. It's completely hot and cold. And the Steelers, I mean, you got Mason Rudolph. So I, I don't know. Plus, TJ uh, could be dinged up, uh, could miss this game, or could be incapacitated for it. So I don't know. Uh, and then Sunday, the late afternoon game. So you got the Packers at the Cowboys. Uh, and also, this is just narratives weekend. Like, you, you don't want to think that the NFL is rigged, but – they love setting up all these storylines. So you, you got Mike McCarthy against the Packers, the upstart Packers, which everyone likes. Uh, actually, it's so it, it kind of sucks. You got to root for the Cowboys, but that's what you got to do. And then you got the six seed Rams who are getting hot at the right time. Puka Nakua getting things done. Stafford is actually looking healthy. Aaron Donald can't be denied. Up at the Lions, Stafford's going to whip some bad his ass. And the Lions, Lions had a good season. They hung the banner. I feel like the Lions are going to be quickly one and done. I think that the Rams come in and roll uh, over Detroit. Yeah. Uh, and then Monday night, uh, you got the Eagles and the uh, and the Buccaneers. <sighs> Monday night always gets screwed in terms of bad matchups, but whatever. Uh, but you know, since the Vikings can't win the Super Bowl, I'm rooting for my, my boys uh, with the Browns. I'm rooting for Stefanski. I, I'm rooting for. Uh, jumping Joe Flacco. I'm rooting for Nick Chubb get a ring, uh, even though he's hurt. Ah, that'd be great. It'd be great, man. So, uh, go Browns. Um, actually, I, I like the Ravens too. Plus, Dalvin signed with the Ravens. Plus, I I respect them as an organization. Uh, I loved Ozzie Newsome. I loved uh, EDC. How they just reload and they have stability. And it's not all. I mean, it's not about draft picks. I mean, the Ravens. They just have this gravitational pull. Like they're able to sign guys like Calais Campbell for a number of years for cheap, or acquire him for cheap, or you know, bring in uh, Jadeve and Clowney and get some huge production out of him. It's just how do they do it? I want to know. As, uh, again, it's not all about draft position because they're always drafting in like the late twenties. So uh, there you go. But uh, see predictions. It's too early for predictions. But I, I'm gonna say. I'm going to say the Rams go on to send a run through the NFC, and I think that they play the Ravens, but ultimately I think the Ravens win the Super Bowl. So there you go. Anyways, uh, that's it. That's it. Uh, take a look at Monday Vikings News Dump. You guys are the best. Skull production value.